Okay, we look at what we call Green's theorem, and this theorem is going to first apply to a small rectangle, I delta X by J delta Y. This rectangle is going to be in the neighborhood of a point XY, so that if we start at the point XY and move I delta X in this direction, we get what we're going to perceive as the lower side of the rectangle. And then if we proceed along the vector j delta y, we get this side of the rectangle, the right-hand side. And then if we go negative i delta x, just neg uh, opposite, equal and opposite to this vector, we get what we see is the top side, and negative j delta y gives us the left-hand side of the rectangle. We're going to assume a sample point x i star, y j star within the rectangle. So now let's assume that a vector function f of x, y equal to m of x, y, i plus n of x, y, j is defined within the region of this rectangle. And what can we determine about the behavior of this function on this rectangle? Well, first let's assemble a few facts. If we've got our sample point x i star y j star, and the appropriate question to ask then is what do we know about f related to this rectangle in terms of the sample point? This vertical dotted line here corresponds to x equals x sub i star. Everywhere on this vertical line, the value of x is x sub i star. Everywhere on this horizontal line, we have y equals y sub j star. Now it should be clear that the corners of the rectangle, and let's look at this picture where they're all labeled, are x, y. We move delta x in the direction of the i vector. We end up at x plus delta x, y. We move delta y in the j direction, and from this point we're going to be at x plus delta x, y plus delta y, and we move in the negative i direction, distance delta x, that's going to put us back at x, y plus delta y. So we see the coordinates of the corners of this rectangle. Now, what's the value of our vector function f here? The value is going to be f of x, y at this point, which is our x, y point. At this point, which is our x plus delta x, y point, the value is f of x plus delta x, y. Now, I haven't labeled it here, but the value is going to be what? It's going to be f evaluated at this point, f of x plus delta x, y plus delta y. And here, we're going to have f evaluated at x, y plus delta y. Now, those actual values at the corner aren't particularly important for finding Green's theorem. Uh, for establishing Green's theorem. They aren't particularly relevant to Green's theorem. What we really want is the values of the vector function corresponding to the coordinates of our sample point. Uh, now it's not labeled here, but clearly the value at x sub i star y sub j star is f of x sub i star y sub j star. More importantly, along this lower side of the rectangle, our sample point gives us a representative x value along this lower side. Now, the y value along the lower side is known. It's just the same as it is at the point x, y. So that the value of the function at this point is then f of x sub i star y. And similarly at this point, the value of the function is what? Well, again, the x-coordinate is x sub i star. The y-coordinate is now y plus delta y because we're on the upper uh, side of this rectangle. And y has increased from y to y plus delta y. So the value at this point is f of x i star y plus delta y. Now, uh, since f is defined in terms of the m and n functions, our value down here, f of x i star y is m of x i star y times i plus n of x i star y times j. Up here, the value is 
m at x i star y plus delta y i. y down here has been replaced by y plus delta y here. So that the m function uh, between here and here has an argument that changes by delta y. And similarly, uh, we evaluate n at the point x i star y and x i star y plus delta y as we move from the lower to the upper portion of this boundary. And at the right and left, we get similar values. Um, at this point, x is now x plus delta x. The sample point gives us a sample y value along this side, which is yj prime. So we're going to evaluate f at x plus delta x, yj prime, giving us this expression that I'm not going to bother to read to you. We'll see it again. And on this side, the value of x is just the value at our lower corner, which is x. y is changing. Our representative y point is y sub j star once more, so that our approximate value of f here is m of x y j star i plus n of x y j star j. The difference, again, between here and here is that we're evaluating at x, whereas over here we're evaluating at x plus delta x. The yj star is the same on both of these vertical sides of our region. Rather, sides of the boundary of our region. Now, we've simply stated some facts about this region. We don't even necessarily know where we're going with this Green's theorem, so let's take a look. What we want to think about on this region is the integral of f dot ds. Yeah, familiar integral. We've seen it many times by now. In this case, that integral, as we've seen previously, is just going to be the integral of mx prime plus ny prime dt, where we implicitly have some parameterization of our boundary, of our curve C. And that, in turn, is equal to m dx plus n dy, because x prime dt is just a dx. x prime stands for dx dt, and when we multiply that by an interval dt, we get a x interval, similarly a y interval. So ultimately, we want to look at the integral of m dx plus n dy. This is the integral we want to consider around this boundary. We'll assemble the details of this integral on this delta x by delta y rectangular region on the next clip. Let's just observe in advance that the integral around this curve, around this boundary of our f dot ds is the integral along c1 of f dot ds plus the integral along c2 plus the integral along c3 plus the integral along c4, where c1 is just the lower side of the rectangle. Um, and let's assume we're going to go around the rectangle in the positive direction. c1 goes this way, c2 along this side, c3 along this side, c4 along this side. And we simply want to observe first that the integral of f around this whole thing can be broken down into the uh, sum of the four integrals, the integrals along each of the four parts of this boundary. So we're going to go on with that in the next clip, and we're going to see um, what sort of expressions we get when we try to approximate this integral based on our sample point xi star yj star.